Welcome everyone to the very first live episode of the podcast and what is a very momentous occasion for us all. I mean, this is a day of great historical significance because the live birdwatching podcast episode will probably go down in history as one of the most long-winded in-jokes ever and the most hastily organised event of all time. I mean, it was, it was a very special day uh, out there hunting for Peter Pigeon. But before we get into the hunt, let's not forget the journey of how we got here, how this came to be. It all started in Chapter 9, when I spotted my very first fat bird. Yesterday, I saw the fattest bird I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> I stared it directly in the eye and then just lost my shit laughing at the bird. <laughs> Like, I don't know how birds get that fat. And you know what's funny about it? Uh, this is not interesting to anyone, a fat bird story. <laughs> oh, how wrong I was. But in the weeks to come, more fat bird stories kept coming. So the other day at work, I didn't see the fat bird again. But I'm like 40% sure I saw a drunk bird. It hit a tree and then the tree, it ping, it ping ponged like off and it hit a wall. And then it just kind of flew off. I told my girlfriend as well, and she was like, yeah, I think you just saw a clumsy bird. So that's another bird story. Um, man, if I have a new bird story every three weeks, now I'm just going to be one of those freaky bird watchers sitting outside with binoculars trying to get more content for the podcast. Little did I know I was foreshadowing the biggest event in podcast history. I noticed how arrogant birds are getting. Birds can't be affording to be cocky these days or arrogant. We all know from this podcast alone that they're getting fat and clumsy. People think I'm some kind of bird enthusiast. All I do is I look at a bird and then judge the girth of its stomach and whether or not I think it's clinically obese or not. And all of a sudden, an underground fat bird community was formed. Also, please keep the bird stories coming. They're the kind of content we all need right now. Love from Sweden. <laughs> People love the bird stories. My podcast audience is 50% people who are interested in my comedy, 50% fat bird enthusiasts. Every single person who I've ever met who listens to the podcast goes, Bro, have you seen another fat bird? Man, I saw a fat bird. Over the coming weeks, fat bird sightings lowered, and thus the tales of these girthy fowls began to seize on the podcast, much to the listener's disappointment. Riley, hey mate. You should definitely bring back the bird stories on your podcast. Jennifer, hey Luke, love your stuff. Any more fat bird stories this week? Haha, <laughs> can't wait to hear another one soon. How often do you think I just see fat birds? I was on a real animal sighting hot streak and now it's just completely gone cold. I'm pretty sure fat birds are extinct. And just like that, it seemed to be over. We assumed that all fat birds had succumbed to one of Jenny Craig's affordable and nutritious meal plans and no longer walked amongst us. Unsponsored. Weeks went by and with no reported fat bird sightings in this time of darkness, we needed a hero. And that hero came to us through Dylan. Okay, here's a good bit of correspondence I had and it is fat bird related, so get excited. Dylan said, uh, all he just said was found a Facebook profile of a fat bird and then he linked me this Facebook profile called Peter Pigeon and I can <laughs> I can only describe it to you as the best Facebook profile I've ever seen <laughs> and the fat bird community rose up out of their nests as a new fowl had been brought to our attention and thus we began learning more about the infamous Peter Pigeon like, here's a good status. Um, hi, I'm Peter, and I'm a pigeon. I'm going to fly to Moe with the boys. Because he looks quite fat from the picture, but not kind of like diabetes fat, just like post-pregnancy fat. It says the pigeon is from Melbourne. Oh, wait, it says I'm a pigeon, and I live by the Yarra. Our goal became pretty clear. One mission and one mission only, to get Peter Pigeon on the podcast. One day, we could be blessed with an interview of Peter Pigeon himself. I mean, as far as A-list celebrities go, you've got your Brads, you've got your Angelinas, you've got your Jennifer Anistons, and then Peter Pigeon's not too far above them. I contacted Peter through his official account and said, hey Peter, big fan. Anyone who isn't can get flocked. I'm keen to get yourself 
on my podcast. After a couple of weeks of trying, it became very apparent that perhaps we were approaching Peter with far too much enthusiasm. I noticed that lots of you guys have been adding Peter Pigeon on Facebook. I think we're all coming on too strong. And I think we've scared Peter off. See, here's my plan for getting Peter on the podcast. This week, we're just gonna freeze Peter Pigeon out. And the freeze out began. I can still remember the sleepless nights, the eternal struggle to resist complimenting his plump underwing, but it was having no effect. I'm no closer to getting Peter on the podcast. But then I devised a plan. One last attempt to get Peter Pigeon on the podcast. Instead of trying to get Peter to come to us, we come to Peter. But we know one thing. He lives at the Yarra River in Melbourne. If I'm going to enter in a full-fledged and fully committed Peter hunt, I, I don't want to do it alone. We need multiple people on this hunt. And I would love to do a live bird watching episode of the podcast. What a glorious day. What a triumphant day that would be. But this is really the last resort and the only thing I can think of is coming to his home, knocking on his door and saying, why the flock did you ignore my message? In order to give ourselves the best chance of finding Peter, I began to assemble an elite bird watching task force. Eight brave members of the Fatbird community to combine their talents and form what is now known as the Elite Eight. This is Lewis Spears speaking. Can I ask who's calling? Hello, is this Danielle? Who's this? It is codename White Dove calling from the EBWTF, the Elite Bird Watching Task Force. How are you going today? Oh my god, I'm good. How are you? Hello? 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 It is. Hello, Caitlin speaking. And thus, the Elite Eight was assembled. Lewis Spears, aka Birdseye, the Watchtower. Caitlin, aka Chick Jagger, Beastmaster and Bird Stylist. Brandon, codename Chipper Reed, the Lura. Brody, aka the Turd Tracker. Danielle, codename Quacky Chan, the Translator. Dean, aka Professor Flapsalot, the Bird Expert. Taylor, also known as Patricia Pigeon, our decoy. And finally, myself, White Dove, King Dickhead and Commander-in-Chief. There was only one thing left to do for our Elite Eight, to take the sacred bird-watching oath. I, Chick Jagger, solemnly swear to focus my passion and lust for fat-flighted fowls. I shall use all my bird-watching elements. Earth, wind, fire, binocular, and thy hot chips. <laughs> Earth, wind, fire, binoculars, and thy hot chips. <laughs> cuckoo! <laughs> cuckoo! 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 Amen. Just a few days out from our hunt for Peter Pigeon, I received some very important intel. The map of Peter Pigeon's last known location. That he actually sent a hand-drawn map. His suspected path is a red dotted line. Robert has also included a little skull that says the death of Ronald. And Ronald was a water rat, also seen on the same night as Peter. I'm assuming Ronald the water rat and Peter Pigeon were friends. And that was it, the last clue before we now attempt to find Peter Pigeon. This could be a world first. I don't think any podcast or even any radio station uh, has ever gotten an interview with a pigeon before. So strap in for the first ever live episode of Memoirs of a White Guy, straight from Peter's nesting grounds, the Yarra River in Melbourne, Australia. And in the misquoted words of Liam Neeson, we will find you and we will interview you. <clears throat> Welcome to chapter 43 of non-fiction recounts of a fully developed macho gentleman with European ancestry. We're here uh, live at the Yarra River uh, with about, how many people do you reckon here? Oh, uh, I'm here with uh, my good friend Lewis, aka Birdseye for today. It's a pleasure to be here, yeah, Captain. You've, um, so, if, how many people do you reckon showed up to this? Far too many. Oh yeah, too many. You were, you were freaking out. You were like, oh, I reckon there's only going to be 10. I'm like, nah, there's going to be at least 100. And we evened out at about 50. About 50. That's pretty good. Guys, make some noise. Give yourselves a round of applause. 
just to prove that we're not standing here talking like fucking retards by ourselves. Yeah, yeah, that'd be embarrassing. So um, all these people came out to, for one reason and one reason only, to find Peter Pigeon himself. Um, do we have any Peter Pigeon fans here? Okay, now... Yeah. <laughs> right, so like one dude's just like, yeah, I want to... So here's the thing, half the people here just want an interview with Peter on the podcast and half the people want to fuck him. And um, can we have a show of hands? All right, who wants to fuck Peter? Far oh, too many that hands looks, just went up. About, that's at least half. At least half the people want to have intercourse with it. What about the meme lords? So these two guys have rocked up. Let's go do an interview here. Unfortunately for everyone listening at home, um, this is a very I'm, visual I'm with joke. two guys. Uh, you're wearing what can only be described as the You Don't Owe Me Speed Dealers and cork hats, matching cork hats. Can you explain why? Um, we, just, we just thought we'd come out here, show the camaraderie in, yeah. in trying to find Peter, yeah. you know? Just, and, and the, dedi- the, um, the tribute to your, your number one video. Yeah, but what's the cork hats? I get the glasses. <laughs> to protect you from the sun. That, that's the so whiteness. There's, there's literally no reason for their core cats, but you look fucking sick. Um, here we've got, um, what was your name? Taylor. Taylor, and Taylor's muffled because he's wearing a pigeon mask. Are you our decoy slash Patricia Pigeon? Yeah. yeah. And he's... <laughs> yeah. I, had to, I had to get the mic under his thing. Um, and, and is that the $13 pigeon mask? I can safe to say, oh, fuck off, there's a helicopter. We're doing shit memes! No, that... Those oh, are the guys I called. I, I, I just called it's backup. actually an emergency helicopter. Um, so pro- someone's probably dying, but they're ruining my fucking podcast. So, um, what's more important? You guys are fucking horrible. Um, so, I, I'm gonna, so that was the thirteen dollar pigeon mask. You got ripped off, one hundred percent. Surprisingly, so, he's come alone. Yeah, did you come alone wearing that on the train? <laughs> okay, you put it on when you realise. There were like 50 other people here for the same shit I reckon shit he reason. came with friends and he put the mask on and they left. <laughs> <laughs> Not hanging around um, that guy. Who else have we got? <laughs> okay, can we get our members of the elite bird watching task force to come up? So if I spoke to you during the week, yeah, come up with your shit mask, mate. Oh, is there... <laughs> now, there should be the elite eight. Um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One dude didn't rock up, but that was expected because I bought an extra hat. Um, so now what we're going to do is I've actually bought these. Uh, you'll notice we're wearing our special EBWTF hats, which obviously stands for Elite Bird Watching Task Force. Everyone knows the acronym. We're all it's, anyway. It's probably the the second most prestigious acronym, but right behind LGBTQI, yeah. however long it gets. Mm, but politicians don't fucking hate us. So um, <laughs> actually, do you know there's a Greater Pigeon Federation Melbourne? Yeah, I looked it up during the week. I was going to notify them of the event, but I didn't want them to crash it. If they were really great, they would be here. They'd know about <laughs> it. That's true. All right, so we're going to give out the hats um, to all the members. So I'll, I'll just go around. Starting off with, um, you say your name. Danielle. Danielle. And what's your role in the task force? Uh, my role is a translator, so hopefully I'll try and lure, maybe, uh, you, Peter. Talk to the birds, so I'll try and you know talk to I Peter. To the helicopter? Yeah, you just yell out. I just you talk. Know, just yeah. I can do that. I'll try and coo. And and what was your code name? Quacky Chan. Quacky Chan, everyone. (laughs) This is, please welcome Quacky Chan to the task force. God, this is... People are wandering past just so fucking confused. I love (laughs) that they stop to see if it's anything. Oh, look, it'll be a cultural exchange. Some art's happening in the street and there's just some dude calling a girl Quacky Chan and putting a hat (laughs) on her head and everyone claps and like, oh, actually, it's just shit. (laughs) 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 <laughs> 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 All right, the next member of the podcast. Um, here we have uh, who do we have here? Dean Robertson. Dean, Dean Robertson. Um, and you are the bird expert. And uh, on your application, you said you're willing to go to page four of Google, which is way wow. further than I would ever go. So, are you still willing to go to page four? What about Bing? No, fuck Bing. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Bing, they're anti-pigeon. Like, that's where you go for all your falcon facts and fuck falcons. Because they are, if you don't know, falcons are pigeons' natural predator. So, yeah, fuck, fuck falcons. Them. Um, cool. All right, welcome, uh, Dean. The, uh, um, do you have a code name? Professor Flapsalot. Professor Flapsalot. Welcome, Professor Flapsalot, to the task force, everyone. Uh, y- y- they're adjustable hats. Three dollars from Kmart. Um, <laughs> all right, the next member, who, who do we have here? Caitlin. And what's your role in the task force? Beast master stylist. Stylist. Very important role if we find Peter to get him interview ready. That's your goal. And um, did you bring your little... Wait, you sent me a Snapchat last night. Look at this. Now, 
Caitlin has bought wow. uh, what can only be described as a bird coat. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, so it's a little black um, number. Oh, geez, he'll be looking very... Now, now he wants to fuck Peter. Where <laughs> Everyone. Yeah. A few people have just like more hands shot up that time. <laughs> um, yeah, so she's bought like a nice little dress for Peter put on. You know that's probably a girl's item of clothing. But you know what? It's 2017. He can wear what he likes. Um, can we like do this once and for all? Are we like a fat bird appreciation society now? Like have we swung around? Because it used to be very anti-fat bird, didn't it? Like who used to be anti-fat bird? And who's still anti-fat bird? But who likes fat birds? Oh, fat yeah. birds are my okay. jam, we're, man. we're definitely an appreciation society now. This is great. Give it up for fat birds. Give it up for fat birds, everyone. No one walking past is clapping, just fucking ignoring us. This dude's running. Ask him what he's running for. Where are you going? He's, he's going <laughs> somewhere very important because he completely ignored me. He completely ignored us and he's still running. Um, he might anyway. be going to alert Peter that we're coming for him. Oh, yeah. Has he anyone... will be found. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome, Caitlin, to the task force, everyone. Oh, also, will we, she'll be known as Chick Jagger. Give it up for Chick Jagger. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst one so far. Oh, I think it gets worse. We'll oh, see. Good. No, this one's a banger. Uh, Brandon. Oh, sorry. What's your name? Chipper Reed. Chipper Reed. Uh, give it up for Chipper Reed, Chipper everyone. Reed. <laughs> Imagine if Chopper rocked up, fucking just back from the dead. Back from. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, you're the um, Laura. Laura, and your job is to bait the birds. And you've bought you bought a secret bird blend. Is this correct? Yeah, I sure have. And can you tell us now what's part of the secret blend? Oh, I just went to my uh, fridge and I'm looked for some shit in there. I uh, it all together. <laughs> and that's my uh, bird seat. You got it with you today? Yeah, I do. Hold on, I'll get it. So we're Just about to see the inside commitment. of Brandon's fridge, everyone. <laughs> what made you think... Oh, no, they're bird seeds. Did you actually... Yeah, made you made your own blend of bird seed. <laughs> yeah. So he's pulled out what looks like a bag of heroin, but <laughs> it's like it's like if someone mixed cornflakes with heroin <laughs> and um, they I bought it... I reckon Peter would be all around that. Huh? Peter would be all about that. Yeah, dude, this is going to work. Guys, look at... Do you reckon this will work? That's you've gone above and beyond, man. Um, oh no, his job is just to Google shit. That's fine. You've, you should, I, I did expect you to bring like, I don't know, like some bullshit computer setup where you've got like, just. But you didn't. You just bought your phone. That's good. That's all you need, really. Four G or three G. Three G. Oh, okay. Ooh. Ooh. Although <laughs> I, I have heard that three G is more versatile. Like it, it, it can be used in a wider spectrum because less people use it. So yeah. that could be that could be good. So if Peter has an now we're just talking about internet speeds and what's <laughs> All right, give it up for um, Ch- what was your name? Chipper Reed, everyone. Um, do you have your hat? Who else? Behind you. Oh, he made it. Who made it? Is this Brody? Brody, welcome Brody to the to the task force. And what um wait, did you just come from a place? I uh, ran all around there. You ran all the way around up to that bridge and there wow, so so you saw us on the other side of the river, you saw some shit memeing happening yeah. and you just like I'm gonna get there ASAP. And you're still puffing? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you, um how are you feeling? Wait, your job is the tracker, do you reckon yeah. you can still keep going? Of course I can. Yeah. All right. And uh your job oh you you're gonna be referred to as the turd tracker. Um is that okay with you? That's fine. So if someone yells examine that poop get down on dirty in it would you how closely would you tongue ah uh, yeah if it nicked, we'll it that's yeah. fucking disgusting all right um, <laughs> welcome uh the turd tracker to the uh elite bird watching task force round of applause i think oh one more member to go um this is definitely a cult by the way everyone this is the most Absolutely, you're putting like ar- ar- articles of clothing. Everyone's wearing the same shit. This is definitely like some Catholic yeah. stuff going on. Yeah. So, <laughs> so but, but the people here are a lot older than usual. Yeah. I good. actually, we didn't uh, welcome you. We'll do you last. All yeah. right. Um. So uh, we're up to um the, the second last member of the elite. Bear He's still wearing force. his. You're pigeon You're still mask. wearing the pigeon mask. What was your name? Taylor. Taylor. Yes. Yeah, so you have to lift lift up his thing every time he speaks. <laughs> Are you um, going to wear the hat on top of the he, mask? Taylor went and bought a $13 pigeon mask from... Where from? eBay. eBay. Good. And how long did it take shipping-wise? Were you worried it would come in time? I paid for express. <laughs> 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 paid for express shipping. That is the true member of the Elite. But that's, that's why you're fucking Elite. All right? So I'm um, giving it up for Taylor, everyone. He's going to be our decoy... 
So what we're going to use Taylor for, are you also good with being Patricia Pigeon at the end? Yeah. And did you bring a women's article of clothing like I told you to? What did you bring? A scarf. A scarf. All right. A women, is it pink? So for everyone listening at home, you can't res- tell. He's actually dressed in lingerie. The yeah. whole outfit. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very arousing. Yeah. I'm getting um, distracted. Yeah. Like half the people, yeah, all the people that didn't put their hand up, want to fuck Peter, want to fuck, what was your name again? Taylor. Taylor, sorry. Um, cool. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty, oh, last member here. Um, oh, wait, what was I explaining? Oh, I was explaining that uh, it, as a last resort, um, if we haven't found Peter, say in like 40 minutes time, because let's be honest, it's getting dark and we all have better shit to do. So, um, we haven't found Peter, uh, Peter we're going to try and seduce him with uh, Patricia Pigeon over here. I mean, you're looking the part, when, once you get the uh, scarf on, and do you reckon, how, what's the likelihood that that'll work? Once I get the scarf on, 100%. 100%. Wow, Peter, you're gonna, <laughs> you guys are going to get a live interview with Peter today. All right, the last member of the task force, um, he's been hosting the podcast part with me, uh, yep. Lewis Spears, how tall are you? I'm six foot eight, which is exactly two meters tall. Which is, as we realized during the week, uh, it's Peter's preferred nesting height. So you're exactly the right height. Um, I've been training my whole life for this moment. Yeah, just sleeping eight hours a day, yep. eating... Everything. Oh, you look a bit malnourished, That's I'll true. be honest. Um, Lewis is quite skinny. For but I don't want to intimidate Peter. I've been starving myself, just yeah. in case. Oi, this, this bloke going past on a bike, no hands. He is wearing a helmet, though. Yeah. So. Oi, are you going to be safe or not? <laughs> Make up your mind. Yeah, he's just ignored us again. It's like we're fucking invisible, all right? There's, anyway, so, uh, all right, we, we, we probably should start finding Peter. I think so. Yeah, all right. What's the, who, who wants to kind of use their tactic first? Oh, by the way, I'm codename White Dove. I make we up. We still haven't introduced me yet. Like, oh, what's my code name? Your code now? name's Bird's Eye. That, that's right. Yeah, you're the watchtower. So essentially your job is to just, you're here to give us a bird's eye view. Yeah. Essentially, because I can't see what the birds see, but you can. Yeah, that's cool. right. All right, so we're going to start finding Peter. Now, at first, I think we just try and get Peter to come to us. Is that a good plan? Does that sound like a good plan? I think that's a goer. Everyone's just in nodding in agreement. Um, do you want to start off with? Have you been? You said you've uh, been working on. We're, we're, we're with Danielle now. Uh, Danielle is the translator. You've said you've been working on some bird calls during the week. She looks determined. I I tried. Uh, there's only so much that I can do, though. What did you come up with? Uh, so if, if you guys didn't know, I, I didn't put this in on the podcast, but uh, in our phone conversation, Danielle said that she had. She you finished. You quit work yesterday. You finished your job Friday. Oh, it's Sunday. Whatever. All right. So every day is the same when you do this for a fucking living. Um, so uh, for no money. So it's just it's just a hobby of mine. I just go around and start orga- cults. Start cults, and people fucking turn up, which is the worrying part. I don't know if you're a genius or everyone here is an idiot. <laughs> it might be a bit of both. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so can you give us maybe start off? Do you want to? Uh, we've got a wombat here. Do you want to stand on the wombat and give us your bird call? Absolutely. Maybe take Lewis's microphone. Yeah. You want to stand you up take my, and this this and wombat, a, this wombat is no joke. Like the wombat comes so up to my waist. I think waist. if Peter's around, okay. So I probably should have explained this at the start. Um, this is very bad hosting one. I got sent a map from uh, Robert, who was the only man to ever meet Peter Pigeon right. And along his uh, suspected course was along the Yarra, and we're right here where I think you saw him a further up. But I assume Peter's moved in the last six months. So there's no point starting off, you know, where Peter did. That's fucking stupid. So um, uh, we've, like, on his suspected path right now. So I think if Peter's around... Where'd Danielle go? You've, you've gone shy. She's run uh, away. Yeah, so I think if Peter's around, he's going to be in the trees here somewhere, you'd assume. I mean, ha- has anyone even... Se- I haven't seen a pigeon yet. Well, these trees are even taller than me, so I'm, I'm struggling. We're going to yeah, need to get the bird Yeah, but Peter's closer. preferred nesting height is two metres, unless he's fucking skydiving today. I don't know. Anyway, so, Danielle, do you want to um, stand up on the wombat here? It's like, you know, like, you know, in cities, they just put I'll help bullshit you out. I'll help art, you out. Where it's, like, not really art. They've just put a fucking wombat it's a giant, in the middle. It's a giant wombat, and she's giving it a go. She's stepping up. Oh, and she's Give done. It Give it up for She's up on the wombat. All right. So. I can, I can coo or I can whistle. What do you reckon is going to be more effective? Because the first one's going to be the real deal breaker. Mm, I can, Sh- she's thinking. Mm, mm. I can whistle louder than I can coo. Let's give it a whistle then. Hit him with... All right, everyone just be completely silent. All right, sorry. Everyone, can we please be completely silent? Turn that music off! <laughs> Thanks, mate. Some dude just give me the thumbs up. Yeah, he's going to be quiet. Legend. Oh, there's a fucking circus next door. That's not helping. Um, I think they're rehearsing, but... um. I think you just to go tell that elephant to shut up. That'd be great. Um, all right, give us your best whistle, Danielle. I really wish 
everyone All right, let's count her in. All right. Three, two, one. Oh. Whoa. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I have the megaphone. This is enough. This is another Kmart buy. Uh, <laughs> is that going to work? Um, there's a way to turn off the buzzing. But but just don't we're bother. Just, maybe that'll add to it. Leave the buzzing on. It's just All right, so go. we're giving her the megaphone. Um, yep. mate, there is just keep on turning it. Fiddle, fiddle with the volume. I, th- I think... <laughs> there we go. All right, now go. Whistle. If you hold it really close to your mouth, and give All it a right. whistle. You've just turned it off, mate. I was like, we fixed the noise. We just turned off the megaphone. Right, we're gonna, I think we have to deal with the noise now. Can we please have some silence again? <laughs> That's actually pretty good. Can anyone see Peter? None of you guys are watching the trees. Why the fuck are you watching her? I'm having a look. I, I'm, I'm looking as high as I can, mate. Man, this is one stubborn pigeon. Maybe we should try cooing. Cooing. Yeah, try a coo. Okay, so method one. Method that, one. Have we has, failed or we've, passed? We've failed. That's right. We've got seven more tries to go. Well done, Danny. I'll give her a round of applause. Yeah, I'll, I'll help you off the wall. She back. absolutely gave it her best. Um, now, Caitlin doesn't really come into it till like you know the end when we actually find Peter. What, what are you going to do when you find him? Do, do you know? I'm really excited because I've got uh, some little claw files. I've got some gel for Peter's feathers. You've got gel. She's, she's actually bought gel. all this shit that she's saying. She's got a packet of gel. Yeah. Oh, my God. So Luke's just going through her yeah, handbag sorry, just right going now. through her handbag. Just give, you might find something you don't want to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like Starburst Lolly. She's bought a whole makeup kit for Peter. That's God, great. he's going to be looking fucking fly. All right. This is sweet. Uh, what should we try as method two? Have you seen... You haven't been looking for Peter, but have you seen any bird poos around? Not yet, no. Not yet. I mean, you haven't you haven't moved. We can't have any slackers in this yeah, group, Yeah, I mean, I think hat. you should be off just kind of just... Looking for looking. shit. He's wearing his, <laughs> he's wearing his merch from the show, which makes up a bit, but, you know. I mean, maybe check check on the river there and, and we'll report back. Just go for go a swim. That. Go for a swim, mate. Go for a swim and report yep. back to us. Brody the tour track has just wandered off to look at poo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> should uh, I go with him and just that's talk comedy, about shit? That's comedy, poo. Uh... <laughs> Huh? Should I go with him and talk yeah, to him ma- about shit? Yeah, maybe you go with him. All right, cool. I'm going to go with oh, him. fuck. The helicopter's back. Maybe they'll assist like, us. Dude, the, like the guy's going to be I dead know. by now. Just <laughs> we're, we're just looking for shit, you and me. All right, let's try. <laughs> we found some bird shit over oh, here. Oh, did you find some bird shit? It looks shit? like pigeon. Yeah. What do you think it is? Whereabouts? Did you pick it up? Stuck down. It's stuck down. All right, we're, we're going to. We're walking away from the crowd. We're going to examine the bird shit. Um, whereabouts? Oh... You guys can follow mm. us if you want, or just stay there. If you all want right, to- well, this is where we need the bird expert. You see, we, we, we combine. All right, so what we've got now is 50 people crowding around about a four-day-old bird poo. <laughs> but this is our first clue. This is first great. clue. This is exactly what we want. I mean, it's right, it's right below a tree, which could mean, I mean, if you're going to shit, yeah, I'd probably, that's, that's a good place to take I'm going to see if I can get a higher look here. Yeah. Standing up here. Yeah, Lewis has got the... Uh, what can you see from up there, well, birds are? about 2.2 metres high, and yeah. uh, it, it still looks like bird shit. So, <laughs> um, so it, yeah, do you want to go maybe go examine the poo? I don't want to do it. And he's getting very he's close He's getting now. very close. Uh, look at it he's through about, your binoculars. It's about, he's looking what at it through see? binoculars. Can you see pigeons' DNA laughing at you? A few brown, few brown specks. specks. Brody is very in close to that poo right now. About three um, in front of fifty away. strangers. Uh, have you ever examined a poo in front of a crowd before? No, I haven't. No, no, I, I haven't either. That One of the many sh- perks. Yeah, of being an elite. I mean, you know, were your parents proud of you? When what did you? Okay, what did people say that they were going to today? Like to their parents? Like you can just yell out some. You just didn't tell them. You're ashamed. Yeah, I same. wouldn't. I was just like, oh, I'm leaving the house, my boy. And then I just left. Um, anyone, like, just say, did anyone tell the truth? I'm going to watch people yeah. look for birds. What did your parents say? Let's, let's talk to someone here. What, what did your parents say? They left me. They left you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, we've got a few orphans in the crowd now. <laughs> what you did your parents one? say? Yeah, yeah. They Hang thought on. I went insane. They thought you went insane. Oh, man, we've dude, imagine one over like, here. What orchestrating did your this say? shit. My parents have disowned me as well. Um, we've got a good one here. Look, my parents were a bit worried. They would have been prouder if I was gay. Proud if you're a gay. I mean, and that's saying something. I mean, <laughs> 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 just wanted to see what I could get away with. Um, anyone else? What did you guys say to your parents? Oh, I lied. You lied. 
So many people are ashamed to be here. <laughs> well, I, I can't really blame them, mate. You just got a guy to put his face in bird shit. <laughs> and then a girl was on a wombat making bird noises. I wouldn't tell mum and dad either. Yeah, cool. All right, well, um, that's the first clue. So uh, who's good at tree climbing? Do you reckon you can have a crack at climbing that bear boy? Yeah, that's a bit of a hard tree. It's, it's one of those trees where there's no branches at uh, really yeah. arm height. You're going to have to, like, crawl up it like it's a coconut tree. All right, I don't have public liability insurance for this event, so maybe don't climb the tree. <laughs> so climbing trees is out because uh, if you break your arm, that'll break Luke's bank. I don't think it will. Like, I'll just be like, ah, we, I was looking for a bird. He was there. Too enthusiastic. I mean, dude, imagine explaining this shit in a fucking courtroom. <laughs> like, so what happened? You're like, well. And then you've got to, like, they've got to go back and listen to 40 episodes of, like, the whitest podcast. You on get the charged East. with human rights abuses. <laughs> For wasting people's time. <laughs> um, all right. So I think that's a dead end. It's a dead end. But we're not concerned. having a lot of luck here. Oh, by the way, someone's rocked up in a suit. Uh, let's go have an interview with him. Um, we're very snazzy. You, you didn't come from work. Is that correct? No. What was your name? Uh, Will. And you just, you were telling me before the podcast started that uh, you just wear the suit yeah. everywhere. Well, not the same one, but you know. Oh, he's got multiple suits. <laughs> multiple suits. So do you just like, you like a Barney Simpson thing, you just wear, the, you're like suit guy. More or less. How's it, does that work for you? Like with the ladies? I mean, I find, I'm just trying to find where my bikini is. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, any ladies interested in the suit? <laughs> He looks better than anyone else here, but no one's put their hand up. I'll, um, I'll dispute that. I think I'm winning the fashion competition. Oh, Lewis, what are your guys' thoughts on? All right, so for those at home, Lewis is he wears this every time I see him. Uh, he looks like a gay bikey, <laughs> like I don't know, but you look like you have this like weird neo-Nazi like uh, emblem. Well, of course I'm wearing an emblem. I've come here, right? Yeah, you need true. an emblem it's for part this. part of a cult. Yeah, but you've chosen the Nazi That's emblem. That's just a, another cult that I'm in part-time. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Are there yeah. any Jews here? Any? <laughs> <laughs> Again, no one's raised their hand. <laughs> okay, so there's a, still an emergency helicopter flying over. If that person's still alive, I'm going to be very surprised. Do you reckon there's been a... F Dude, we should have got a helicopter for this shit. Oh, there's a pigeon. Oh, no. It's a oh, bird expert. Identify that bird in the tree. He can't see it. It's just the one up there in the tree. It's quite small. It's flying. There it's flying. goes. He's got binoculars He's now. got binoculars. He's on it. He's on it. We're all waiting for a result. He hasn't got out his way. phone, though. So we're no closer to it. You don't know what pigeons look like. Why the fuck did we get you as the bird expert? <laughs> <laughs> he said oh, that you he does. Do. He knows. All right. okay, well, that wasn't on. a pigeon. Um... Are we back? Do you know? Pardon? Do you know what the species of bird was? A rock. Domestic rock thingy. I don't know. Domestic rock thingy, everyone. <laughs> was it like a... You could have just said like Western African quarrel and I would have been like, oh, wow, that's quite impressive. Um, all right. So this is like... Okay, here's the thing. If this was like a radio show, like... The, like we'd stop doing this between the songs and we could, would kind of move between each location play a bit of Lady Gaga but this is like yeah there's no Lady Gaga so essentially this is just a lot of going to be a lot of us walking around and uh, it's, it's kind of like the Lord of the Rings bonus like you know like the, the bonus edition where it's just like the same shit but just extra walking it's like that so um Let's just kind of maybe move back to where we were near the wombat. Uh, no luck there with the bird poo. Lewis. Unfortunately, no. But uh, but it was it was our first clue, which means there are birds in this area. Well, that's good. Imagine if we went to a place that wasn't inhabited by bird birds. Plane. Brandon, all right, I reckon now we, we we do the we, we try and lure Peter to us. Let's let's go, Brandon. I'm, I'm here with Brandon now, and he's got his bird seed ready. So can you tell us all the ingredients that are in the seed? Uh, there was some. Uh I don't know, there was some, some like seed kind of thing I found. I think it's used for cooking, but I don't know, I took it. I spot rice, cornflakes, uh, muesli. There was some Uncle Toby oats in there. Yeah. Um, and he's not fucking around, this is a big bag. Oh, like, yeah, it's, it's not a small little bag, like, this could like, feed could 10 people. Smuggle pieces. that with headphones, like, no from way. Columbia. That's, like, proper, like, homegrown shit. This is Chappelle shit. Corby tier. Yeah. Like, put that shit in a boogie bag. Yeah, boogie board. Boogie bag? Boogie board in a bag. Yeah. <laughs> we got the joke eventually. Um, yeah, so maybe like, w w oh, wait, oh, I thought you were gonna go get hot chips. But are you? Do you realize? Do, wait, I think this is better than. Do hot you think chips. that's better than hot chips? Be honest. 
I reckon. I reckon. All right, we don't need hot chips in the wheel. I was thinking, if you just maybe go, all right, let's, if you go, there's that kind of a water tap nearby. If you just sprinkle some on top, because we don't want to surround the, you know, where they are, we'll put him off. So maybe just go sprinkle some on top of, like, the water tap, and then... I, I'll take him. Yeah, you take and we'll, him. Uh, and we'll do it. Yeah, go. So Lewis is walking away with Brandon. He's got the bird seed. Uh, he's about to put it on top of the drink tap. All right, so what's happening now is uh, we're just putting bird seed all over the place. And by all over the place, I mean this thing is covered. Right, oh, he, we're using yeah. we're using at least half of this bag, the boogie board bag, and uh, we're putting it everywhere. If this doesn't attract at least a hundred birds, I'm going to be very surprised. This is and it's and it's on top of like a, a drinking fountain for humans, so it's going to completely just take this out of the equation. No one's going to be able to use it for a long time because it'll be covered in birds and their shit. Uh, I think we're just going to get charged for littering. I'm not sure if that actually did anything. Oh. Was that a was that a Peter honk? Or was that just like you're in the way honk? There's a lot of vehicles here, yeah. helicopters, cars, which is um, weird because this is not a road. How did it go, Brandon? I kind of stayed over here. How did you reckon? It's been about a minute so far, and we've had no bird activity next. To it. Someone keep an eye on that. Can we like get someone to keep an eye on that? It's all right, guys. Just a quick note. It's me back in my bedroom. I just wanted to say that at this point in the live podcast. Lewis accidentally turns off his microphone, <laughs> so for the next 15 minutes, we start having discussions, and um, it's obviously, it's one-sided, because you can't hear Lewis, so I've had to edit some bits out, because they just didn't make sense at all, but I've kept it, I've tried to keep it as much as possible, and uh, you'll get what's going on, but yeah, occasionally Lewis might sound really faint in the background, and that's because his voice is being picked up on my microphone, because his isn't on. But yeah, I hope it, just bear with us and his microphone comes on in about 10 minutes or so. <laughs> All right, so what do we want to try next? We've done the lure, we've done thing. I, I think, well, how many minutes in are we? We've still had, has anyone seen a pigeon yet? This is coming, this is, you know, wait, sorry, Caitlin's just on the lookout there. Just spotted a duck. Oh, it's a duck. False alarm, everyone. It was a duck. Quacky Cham, what are your thoughts on that? It's cute. <laughs> She likes the duck. All right. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Um, oh, okay, so maybe we tried the decoy. Come out, Taylor. All right, Taylor's still wearing the pigeon mask. He still, you haven't taken it off. Oi, we have some activity near the, near the seeds, but it's just a... Is that a bird? It's a five-year-old child on a scooter, and he's now running over the bird seeds. Okay, that's all right. Now his mother is looking at he's, suspicious... Yes, because I'm, I'm pointing at her kid and yelling. Uh, Fair it's, a, it's a cool scooter. Yep, and now she's rushing her kid off in the other direction, um, and child services are inbound. <laughs> uh, is that dude taking a picture of the seeds? Oh, no, the massive piece of art behind the seeds. <laughs> yeah, all right, so there's currently now no activity. All right, let's go back to Taylor. Are you still wearing the mask? All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to pretend, right, that we've found... So Because right now, Peter's probably watching us, like, and we look like idiots, right? And he's like, oh, I'm never funny. Let's just pretend. So we're not looking for him anymore because we're going to pretend. What's your pigeon? Oh, should we pretend you're Peter? What's the best attack plan here? Should we pretend that Taylor's Peter and, and just do a bit of like, oh, we found him. We're all going home. And then we just leave? Or is that the best attack for a decoy? Well, are we trying to confuse Peter? I think, I think we want him to, are we trying to convince Peter that we're no longer looking for him? Because then he'll come out. So then, so then we should, the decoy should, should be Peter and not the cat. Yeah. All right, so maybe lose the cap because that might give you away as a non-pigeon. <laughs> I think that's the only thing that distinguishes you between human and pigeon right now. Other than that, you're looking like a small bird. All right, so what Taylor's doing now can only be described as uh, being a bird on the ground. Maybe flap around, like kick up some shit. <laughs> All right, is this... I mean, uh, uh, no birds are coming to the area. It's Danielle, come over, come over. You, you, you jump back on the thing, right? God, people are walking past just so confused. There's a dude pigeoning around on the ground, and Danielle's now standing up on the wombat again. Um, maybe just go start yelling bird noises and see if this works. <laughs> Why do you hate us, Peter? Yeah, all the humans are looking, no birds. This is okay. We've just worked out how to attract humans' attention. Wrong species. Shit. No, you're doing great. Well, maybe let's leave it for a bit. This isn't working. All right, that's four failed attempts. Now we're, go now we're crowdsourcing ideas. Has anyone got a decent idea to find Peter? Someone's put their hand up. What's your name? Pete. Your name's Peter. 
Are you a pigeon? Unfortunately not. I fucking wish I was. Oh, that would have been a great ending, wouldn't have it? We could have just fucking wrapped that up and gone home. That's <laughs> I know. How can we be sure that you're not a pigeon? I'm not fucking saying shit. Oh, okay. Hey, Brody, have you just been off looking for poo? <laughs> totally forgot I assigned him to look at shit earlier. <laughs> Brody's just come back. Did you have any luck? Lots of small poos. Lots moves. of small poos leading that way. So we're having a lot more poo action. Have you checked? It? Oh, have you checked near the near the bird seed? Oh, we actually put. Oh. Ooh, a seagull just flew past. It's not for you, mate. Fucking dick. All right, let's go back to... I think we've got Peter Pigeon here. I'm still not convinced this guy isn't a bird. Can, can you... Okay, what would you... What would a human know? Um, Who is Luke Skywalker's father? Uh, uh, fucking Anakin. I mean, that's, that's what a pigeon would say. Does anyone have a question for him that only a human would know the answer to? What's the best thing about having a posable thumb? Uh, so at this point, I forget what the dude said. It was probably something pretty average. And uh, Lewis then asks him, what's his favourite form of social media? And Pete replies with Twitter. Ooh. <laughs> that is a bird answer. And also, Twitter is a dying social medium. Oh. Man, I tweet shit. It gets like four likes. And you guys follow me on Twitter. It's getting depressing over there. A lot of traction on Facebook and um, clearly not... A, imagine if I had promoted this on Twitter, it'd just be us yelling at birds. Which is actually no less sad than this already is. So, um, uh, have you guys got any got any plans for how to find... Uh, uh, we're back to the meme lords now with the with the uh, sunglasses. Have you guys got any plans to find Peter? I mean, maybe the hot chips would have worked better. Maybe we need to go get some hot chips. Who wants to do a hot chip run? Brandon Delura, he's up for a hot chip run. Where's the nearest? Uh, is KFC? I mean, Macca's is like probably 500. Lord of the Fries, whereabouts is it? Right outside Flinders Street. I mean, look, we're having no like, oh, we've actually, we've attracted some Asian tourists with the uh, bird seed. You're actually Asian yourself, Brandon. It's the rice. Okay, yeah. It's yeah, it's the rice. Ever. <laughs> Yeah, it's classic. Yeah. Although there are a lot of white people also spreading around the cornflakes. So, lots of white children. That's why the fucking scooter kid was there. He saw cornflakes. He's probably one of those kids who's like, his mum forces him to have like Sultana brand. Poor kid. Anyway. All right. I, I've, oh, are we going back to Peter? We're st I'm still not... Accusing you? You led us to believe that you're a pigeon. You're sitting here all pigeon-like. I saw him flap. All right. Who got who? Okay, let's do a show of hands. Let's just end this with a poll. Who here thinks that Pete here is Peter the Pigeon? Mate, you got explain yourself. A lot of hands went up. There's an overwhelming majority of people who think you're a bird. <laughs> let's just have a 40 minute debate. Is this guy a bird or not? <laughs> um, Brody, what did you find near Brody's back now from looking for poos? What did you find near the bird seat? Possum poo. Possum poo. So we're attracting the wrong species yet again. What did you make this out of? You made it... You, uh, also, Brandon has not left to get chips, by the way. You want me to go? If you want. I mean, I can give you some money if you want. Fine. Emily will go with you. All right. All right. We'll see you in about 10 minutes. Godspeed. All right. Brandon's off now with uh, Emily, who you all know from the podcast. Um, give him a round of applause. Brandon's going to get hot chips. <laughs> Oh, this pe I think. Oh, the circus is finished, and now there's people. Trust me, the circus was way better than this. Just kidding. <laughs> have you guys seen a uh, a bird called Peter, a pigeon? We're getting a lot of lot of shaking heads, man. Oh, true. Now that the circus is finished, Peter was probably doing sick tricks. Um, who thinks that we'll actually find Peter? Still a lot of optimism from, like, eight failed attempts. It's getting cold. Uh, it's Melbourne in the middle of winter. Why do we do this in the middle of winter? We haven't actually asked any members of the public here. Let's ask some people w walking out of the um, circus. I'm just leaving the crowd, by the way. Everyone's just... I'm just going to go ask some people who are... Uh, people are following. Um, uh, dude, you guys look like you're attacking. Stay back. <laughs> We're just doing a podcast at the moment. Uh, we're actually... We're actually. I'm here with... Marco. Marco. And did you just come from the circus? We did. How was it? Fantastic. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. Yep. Yeah, I don't think I've... I think I've been to circus was once, but... Uh, more, more often? How often do you go to circuses? Uh, probably two or three times a year. Wow. Yeah. That's a, that's a lot... Way more than me. <laughs> so have you guys seen... We're looking for a... a a pigeon named Peter. Have you guys seen any pigeons around? Well, I, I do see. I do see a pigeon over there. You've been spotted. 
Peter Pigeon's been spotted. Oh, no, it's just our decoy. That's just, yeah, it's a decoy pigeon we've set up. What do you reckon our chances are of finding one individual pigeon in the whole of Melbourne? I'd say they were poor. poor. Poor chances. All right. So not a lot of optimism happening here. But thank you guys very much for joining us on the podcast. I'm glad you enjoyed the circus. And, and, and keep a lookout for, um, you know, pe- uh, pigeons on the way up. And sure. Just maybe yell back if you spot one. Okay. Great. Thanks very much. All right. No luck there, unfortunately. But they did have a great time Going at the circus. Well. Now, Brody's Probably just back. still wandering around looking for shit. I mean, Brody, did you come by yourself to this event? Oh, so you found someone you know at the event, and you've ditched him to look at poo. Um, wait, let's go talk to your friend then. Are you guys together? Together, or what, like, as in like how relationship or just mates? Well, I assumed you were mates, but are you together that way? <laughs> well, if he wants it, no, I'm, no, we're just mates. Yeah. Do you guys know each other from school? Yeah, yeah, we've been friends since prep. And how do you feel that he stitched you for bird shit today? Well, I'd say it's a surprise, but knowing him, no, it's not. <laughs> Abandon his friend. That's great. So basically what he's saying is bird shit is better than you. How does it feel? Well, that's what my mum calls me either. So, so I reckon, yeah, nothing new. I reckon we're going to have to... <laughs> well, I reckon we wait for, for Brandon to get back. We try one more time, and then we may... You know, a special guest may come at the end of the podcast. We'll see. But, um... Oh, yeah, oh so, um, Taylor... Uh, sorry, P- Patricia... Oh, you, we'll do Patricia Pigeon soon when Brandon gets back. Um... I said, have you seen a pigeon around? And that guy actually said, yes. I got excited, and he was pointing at you. Um, which means, though, that you're doing a very convincing job of being a pigeon. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, it's good. You genuinely look like one from afar. But when you get up close, you can kind of tell you're a human. Not really. I mean, can I you guys tell? Face. Oh, true. I actually don't know what you look like yet. You know what? Keep... <laughs> <laughs> you say... Well, what did you say? It's staying that way. Are you ashamed of your face, or do you just like being a pigeon more than you like being yourself? I'm a ginger, so I'm going to have to keep this on. He's a ginger. I've okay. got a theory. Yeah. I've got a theory. I think that this guy could be Peter wearing oh. a pigeon mask to throw us off. Are you Peter? No. That's, That's what, what a Peter, Peter would say, say That's again. That's what Peter would say. How can you know? Brody's, Brody's still looking for shit. I mean... Have you, have you found any more bits that we can examine? Oh, actually, why Brandon's um, coming, uh, can we all just gather around? Actually, we forgot to do this at the start of the podcast. Maybe if we just, oh, we'll throw something out in the water or something. Um, if, who listened to last week's podcast? Everyone listen. Uh, you would be familiar then with um, uh, Paul Ronald, the dead water rat. Everyone familiar with Ronald? Yeah. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rest um, his soul. And on the map that uh, was provided to me during the week, there was a skull on the map along the Yarra River where, um, unfortunately, uh, Ronald died. So if you don't know the backstory, Ronald and Peter, were we assume, were good friends because they were both seen with each other on the same night that Peter was first seen by Robert. Pigeons are referred to as the rats of the sky, so they would be a fine... That's be a very true. Common both dawn. are pests and both are very unliked animals. And fat. And fat. Wow, lots of similarities between rats and pigeons. What well, have you got the answer from the internet, by the way? Before we do this uh, morning magpies. ceremony, magpies aren't—they attack baby birds. They're more scavengers. Ooh, than predators. see, that's it's, why it's we got the bird between. expert. Give give him a round of applause, everyone. Right. First bird-related fact: forty minutes in. <laughs> what search engine did you use to find that? Not Bing. No, that's right. <laughs> Can we get a fuck Bing on one, two, three? Right, one, two, three. Fuck, fuck Bing. Bing. Yeah, fuck but you. Yahoo's all right. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, all right, let's get back to grieving. I'm sorry, we moved on. We got, all got happy. Um, let's get back to grieving for a sec. Um, so, yeah, uh, we, we all know um, that we, none of us really met him, and uh, but I think we, if we all did, we'd all would have appreciated Ronald the Water Rat. Uh, so, what we're going to do is a quick uh, moment of silence for Ronald, so we can all just come in closer to the river, coming come close, maybe gather round. Um, does anyone have any ideas for a, a tribute to a dead water rat? Maybe. A- a prayer? A prayer. I think yeah. we could do a prayer. I like a prayer. Yeah. Could you lead us on the prayer? I go, I, I go to a Catholic school. Okay, we've got yeah. someone who goes to a Catholic school. Hey, Jesus. Lord. Lead us on um, this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. On three, amen. Cult. One, two, three. Amen. amen. All right, rat. Oh, wait, moment of silence. And that's enough. It was just a rat. All right, let's fucking move on. (laughs) All right, Brandon's back. We have hot chips inbound. We don't have hot chips. Um, (laughs) Did you guys just couldn't be fucked to walk and you saw popcorn closer? 
They've come back with popcorn. What Yo, a bloody on, this twist. This is the expert, so let him, let him justify Peter's himself. Hip, and he likes to eat things that starts with his first name. So, so we decided to get popcorn. Yeah. yeah, everyone knows alliteration over basic science. <laughs> we got attacked as well by um, Paul and Percy. Paul the pigeon, Percy the pigeon. You got attacked oh. by two pigeons. Yeah. Did Holy you ask shit. Them, Where's Peter? Yeah, but they said they don't know. He's been missing for a while. Just our luck that no pigeons have... Yeah, have you guys noticed we actually haven't seen a pigeon yet? Well, oh, Patricia's come out early. Dude, she's, got, she's got the scarf on. But did you buy that scarf as well? It's still got the tag on it. Oh. How, let me see this. How much did he spend? How much did you spend? $20. Did you spend $20 on this meme? Yes. How much... Wait, so $13. How much was express shipping? $5.80. Five dollars eighty. I'm not very good at maths. Thirteen dollars, eighteen dollars eighty plus twenty. You've spent forty eight dollars eighty on this meme. Has plus anybody here travel. spent? I only spent like twenty bucks on this meme for hats. I mean, <laughs> give it up for Patricia, everyone. Whose decoy is turned into Patricia? Absolutely All right, waste let's go back to popcorn. A bird expert has something to say. Yeah, popcorn. I googled it and pigeons love popcorn. Pigeons love popcorn. Give it up for the Lura Brand Chipper Reed, everyone. Man, you know your shit. First pigeon experience today. Was it exciting? Um, like I said on the phone call, it changed my life. <laughs> wow. You lost, you lost your pigeon virginity. So you fucked the pigeon. Yeah. <laughs> fuck Percy. Fuck you, fuck Percy? Yeah. How did you, t- dude, how did you fit? Oh, he's Asian. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to his face. Boom. Ah, right. <laughs> oh, all right. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Don't brag about it. All right. Um, so, uh, we've had one and well, I've had... Then I think that's been um, the highlight of the podcast. Sadly, a dude fucking a bird. Um, although I expected nothing less. So w- what's the plan now, Luke? Where is this going? Um, well, we're, we're going to have to... This, we, we've got two more things to try. We're going to try and lure him with popcorn. Then we're going to try and lure, with, lure him with Patricia. If, if not, we call it a fail and uh, we go home and do better shit with our lives. Does that sound good to everyone? Yeah. yeah. All right. No. Who it's- said No. Someone's very committed. Someone's committed. Can we talk to the committed? Was it, I think it was you, you know? Yeah, it was you. Why are you so committed? I mean, I like the commitment. Oh, <laughs> uh, I just want to find the pigeon. How old are you, she by just the way? I to find the uh, pigeon. 15. 15. All right. Are you the, I think you're the youngest member here. What did your parents say? Are you guys together? No. Friend zone situation. <laughs> oh, have you been friend zoned? Not by her. <laughs> we're, we're talking to a man who just did the prayer. Can um, we try the popcorn then? Yeah, let's try the popcorn. Should. All right. Maybe go... But I, I don't think that we'd have had a lot of luck. Maybe let's put the popcorn on the wombat. Wait, can you Google, a pigeon's afraid of wombats? Yeah, we should get a quick Google. Imagine if there's a Yahoo answers on that. That one's like, yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> can I just have a bit of popcorn? It's gone cold. Um, I don't think he's going to... Ha- you have a bit. Test it. Do you reckon Peter would like that? It's pretty good. Pretty good popcorn. Out of 10. Six. It kind of everyone. It kind of tastes like a real cinema popcorn. Quite buttery. Um, do, are pigeons like lactose intolerant? <laughs> I have no, no idea. I'm asking Lewis, and he's just I'm, he's just referred me. I mean, we've already got someone googling it. Maybe get two tabs open. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a good Luke, call. We've got, we've oh, got we've a got result the fact. From the, what well, do we, we have? have mate? Wombat fact. slash pigeons on Spotify. So it's a song. Maybe we should play the song. Actually, oh, by the wombats. James Cohen. All right, cool. Maybe we shouldn't because that'll get the podcast taken down from iTunes. Yes, copyright <laughs> infringement. But maybe maybe we can say inconclusive, let's try our best. Yes, okay. So Let's put the try our on. best. All right. All right, so let's get rid of the birds. See, that only attracted Asians and small children. Uh, that's not helping. Um, all right, let's, we're placing the popcorn. I'm pretty popcorn. sure popcorn's a white person's invention as well. So, True. This I mean, is memoirs of a white Okay, don't people. pour it all on. I, I want it a bit, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it now. He just scoops some of the popcorn back into the bag. All right, this hasn't worked. Uh, the popcorn's just sitting on top of that. Has anyone spotted a pigeon? It's looking like a catastrophic failure. Oh, we're, now we're just pointing at Pete and still calling him a pigeon. Um, yeah, okay, Someone so this dude gun. came from Comic-Con. Dude, no wonder there's no pigeons. You're walking around with a, a weapon in your bag. It's a very white thing to do, show up to a crowded event with a gun. <laughs> um, yeah, how come you got a gun? Um, all right, so maybe just hide the gun. Uh, that's probably, I mean, look, I need a, I need a, someone to blame for this being a failure, and um, I'm not going to blame you because you've spent 48 bucks on a pigeon costume. Uh, the popcorn hasn't worked. 
Have we tried the decoy properly yet? No, I think we just do one fun fact and then we just, um, you know. I've bought a very fun fact. All right, so should we do the fun yeah, fact? let's do the fun fact. Do All you right. have one? Cool. Yeah, I've got a great one. Lewis right. is doing the fun fact today. Guess fun fact. All right. <clears throat> okay. No, sorry. We've got to do it. Uh, is everyone, everyone heard the fun fact? Oh, we all know how much enjoyment we get out of the fun fact. Yeah, does everyone? All right. What's, let's go around. What's your favorite thing about the fun fact every week? I don't know. He doesn't listen to the podcast. All right. Anyone here listen to the podcast? <laughs> all right. What's your... I don't... Peter, no. Nah, I don't trust you. The fun fact horn. What's your favorite thing every week about the fun fact? Does it, you know, make you feel warm inside? Yeah, it does. And I like how inconspicuous and elaborate they are every week. Wow, that's great. A- any more fun facts over here? Yeah, you're a fun fact fan? My favourite thing about fun facts is that it's not miscellaneous bit at the end. Oh, that's, a, that's a good one. That is a good one. That is a good in-joke that's from another good. podcast. All yes, right. that's well, good. Well, let's do the fun. Are we ready? Can everyone just gather around for this fun fact? But by it's, the way... It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, so get, gather around. Obviously. Get ready for some fun. Um, maybe gather around, and then pretty much when he drops it, I'll sound the horn... Start having a fuckload of fun. Let's start partying after this fact. Are you ready? Okay. Go. So do you guys know the movie, the animated dinosaur movie, The Land Before Time? Would have watched it when you were a kid? Is everyone right. familiar with that? So the character, Ducky, her voice actor, who was about eight years old, and after she did the movie, she was shot and killed by her own father. <laughs> Sound the fun fact horn! Yay! Now that's fun. That's fun. Oh, people nearby are like jumping, they're screaming. There's nothing more fun than a child actor being killed by her own father. Oh, that is bloody good stuff, man. Are we all going to hell? Yes. The answer was definitely, but uh, yes, I like the enthusiasm. All right, well, that's fun fact. Let's try one more thing and let me, let me just call this a mass fail. All I'm, right. I'm prepared to call it a Patricia, fail. Patricia, are you ready? We're down to the last resort. I'm ready. Maybe. All right. Let's just combine every single element. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm just going to stand on the... Let's do this. Right, Luke's this, standing on the wombat. I'm standing on the wombat. Be I'm careful, careful mate. It's very hard. I almost just slipped off the wombat, but I'm trying to avoid the popcorn. To give, to give a, a, like a, a visual representation, he's now higher than me, the watchtower. <clears throat> Elite bird watching task force. Assemble. And now four people have walked forward. All right. This is great. All right. We're ready. All right. So what we're going to do now is when it, we're just going to combine... Every single elite member. You've got 3G going. Maybe next time get 4G. Uh, <laughs> we've got Brody. He's looking at you. Okay, this whole time, you're just going to be... Is there a poo in the area that you can examine? Um, Caitlin, you've got to be ready to go because yeah, if Peter hard. comes, you've got to jump on him and start getting him interview ready because we're running out of time. Brandon's got his popcorn. Maybe get the bird to that as well. If we get an Asian, we get an Asian. Um, <laughs> Danielle, maybe you come up here with me on the... Uh, I'll stand on this side of the wombat. It's quite a large wombat. And it's covered with popcorn, so it's she popcorn may slip. popcorn covered wombat. Oh! Yep. All right, Lewis. Uh, maybe you should be up here, but you don't I, need no, to be. I don't need to be up here. I'm keeping. All it right, up. Patricia. What, okay. What are you going to do to seduce to seduce uh, Peter as Patricia? I think I'm going to grind on the wombat. He's going to grind. He's going to grind on the wombat. That's All right. Very sexy. Holy shit. All right, and Patricia. Okay. Is grinding. No, no. Let's not start yet. Hey, wait. Does anyone have like a what's a sexy song we could play? Pony. 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 All right. Does anyone have that? Do we know the song? What Again, about, that will get you disqualified from iTunes. What about we sing a song? What's the song we all know? Do you want to sing You're the Voice by John Farnham for no <laughs> apparent reason? That's pretty sexy. Uh, what's like the most well-known song that everyone will know? Happy Birthday. What about we sing Horses but we say Pigeons? Does everyone know Horses by Daryl Braithwaite? That's the way it's going to be. Little. All right, are you ready? All right, so we'll start off there, and as soon as we start, you're just going to start grinding. I'll describe yeah, what's going on because I don't be know the words. And you'll be riding on that, and everyone says pigeons, and then if he doesn't come, we just fucking leave. All right, this is the last attempt. This is the last hurrah. All right, one, two, three. So okay. that's and the Patricia way it's going to be, little rubbing darling. Rubbing his ass on top of a wombat. We'll be riding on the tits, pigeon. The yeah, yeah. The Peter, where is he? Is he come? I'm keeping an eye out, mate. I have. You've still got your gun out. No fucking wonder he didn't come. Luke, I'm I'm ashamed to report I don't spot any pigeons from. And my that bird's is direct view. from the watchtower himself. All right. Well, it's getting dark. We've had no luck. Um, do we just call this a day? I'm going to call this one an epic fail, Luke. <sighs> Thank you guys very much for coming out. Um, that is the end of the podcast. Um, so um, yeah, we're just going to call this a big um, big fail, and then we and then we just pack pack All it right. up. 
let's turn the mics on. I'm really sorry, guys. This this sucked. I'm sorry. So at this point, that was actually supposed to be the end of the podcast. We thought, oh well, hasn't been successful. Uh, it's, it was a bit of an underwhelming end, and we were kind of bummed out. And we're like, oh well, we tried. You know what I mean? And um, just as we were, everyone was about to leave, and we started packing up all the equipment and stuff, you'll never guess what happened. I was just. <laughs> I, ca- I cannot fathom how unlucky. So just as we turn off the mic, I'll just play the audio, but like it was absolutely incredible. So this is what happened. Well, at least this was what we got recorded. Just listen to this. I still am in shock as to what happened. Holy oh, shit! It's oh, no, okay, okay. All right, oh, everyone Peter. calm down. Okay, oh, so what just happened? You would not believe what oh, happened. My God. As soon as we turn off the microphone... A white light shone down from the art center building. It's it just beautiful. across the road. It was, oh, it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It was breathtaking. He, Peter must have seen, uh, you know, P- Patricia grinding. He came down and, oh my God. He, we I'm actually, have to ask someone no, what they think. What well, we you, actually did, did the see? interview. I'm in shock. Like, I'm in total shock. You're right in now. total shock. Who else happen, is like, honestly. are you guys just like in complete shock right now? I don't know what to say. You don't know what I'm, to say? I'm speechless. People are genuinely lost for words. Taylor, what were your thoughts? I knew it was going to work. You knew it was going to work. Taylor was confident the I whole time. I can't believe that it wasn't recorded. Brandon, do you reckon it was your popcorn? Oh, I think it is. I just got an aneurysm from that as well. You just got an aneurysm? Yeah. Oh, my God. Someone nearly died. Oh, my God. But that's what happens. I mean... When Peter came from the sky, it was like an EMP, and it just took out the microphones. Everything stopped recording. But you know what? We'll remember this moment we'll re- forever. We'll all remember the greatest moment in podcast history, won't we, guys? Can we always have a massive round of applause for what just took place? Spectacular. As soon as the... Mo- you That... What? That's so unlucky. We've been out here for an hour, and as soon as we turn the mics off... But the fattest bird I've ever seen in my life descended from the heavens. Oh, what my did God. Like, Luke? It, <laughs> what did it look like? Oh, my God. Imagine, like... Okay, has everyone seen Peter Pigeon's profile picture on Facebook? It, it resembled that exactly. Even fatter. <laughs> even fatter. He's gotten fatter since... No, he's photo gotten fatter. He's been on the fucking popcorn, and thick. Thick bird, and you'll never guess. So what happened? If you don't realize, we actually recorded the interview. It was great. He gave us a real insight into what it's like we to live in the Yarra. Uh, Caitlin actually got him interview ready. He looked very good in his little costume, didn't he? He did. He looked absolutely breathtaking. Yeah, and, on- and what kind of like you know makeup stuff did you use to make him look pretty? Can you give us an insight into the behind the scenes? Because he was looking quite good in, uh, during the interview. He was spilling out of his costume. Well, I didn't put quite plenty fit. of uh, blush on his girthy cheeks girthy and. Cheeks, um, yeah. You know, I had some little, some gel in his hair and made sure that I... He had quite a rotund beak, didn't he? Oh, stunning, Stunning. honestly. Fat as fuck. Oh, I mean, we all yelled at him and, like, laughed at him for 10 minutes, but after that, we all quieted down and we let him speak. But, um... It was great. So, mate, guys, we, we've all seen Peter. We came out and we... I'm so sorry you guys at home will um, will never get to hear the interview. But uh, everyone here can confirm. Can we all confirm it happened? Oh, yeah. yeah, it happened. And um, you guys, I guess you guys should have come to the you live should, podcast. You've got to come to the next one because yeah. every amazing shit happens. We're not doing this again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I cannot thank you all enough for coming uh, out, guys. It's getting very cold. Um, you guys are legends. Give yourselves a round of applause. Um, Thank you, Lewis, to the Watchtower for, oh, uh, for co-hosting me. this live meme. Um, and, yeah, we did it. I can't believe it. Daniel, what were your thoughts on it? I mean, maybe it was your bird calls, do you reckon? I definitely think it was the bird calls in yeah, the I end. Mean, everyone's claiming. I think it was a... He just, did comment on the bird calls. He yeah, he did. Resist them. Yeah, he said. Well, he did say that he had a, quite a bit of popcorn as well. Yeah. Mm, not helping. I mean, he needs to go on a fucking fitness plan. I mean... <laughs> But well, anyway. he didn't eat any of the uh, the rice mixture, so he's not Asian. We do know that. No, Peter's. Uh, or I think can pigeons be well, Asian? He he showed up to this podcast, so he's pretty white. Yeah, that's true. All right. Well, uh, that's the end of the podcast. I can't believe he came. Amazing. Amazing. Incredible you, scenes down here on the Yarra. It's actually dark now. But, it's, um, it's so dark that we're probably going to get stabbed on the way home. So. Yeah, so uh, let's, let's just leave before it gets uh, dark. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. Uh, if you're still listening to this, wow. <laughs> like, it was shit being here, imagine. <laughs> I know. All right, so shall we wrap it up then, Let's Luke? wrap it up. Right, everyone give Luke Kidgel a round of applause for putting this on. And... And an amazing podcast. Yes. Well done, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming out. Let's end this once and for all. Um, oh, and give it up for Peter, everyone. And give it up for give it up for all the members of the Elite Task Force. Keep it going. They were all great. Give it up for Chipper Reed, Chick Jagger, Quacky Chan, the Turd Tracker. I'm going to forget someone. Patricia Pigeon, Bird's Eye, 
Me it was absolutely Whitehead. amazing, We're mate. still recording the podcast. And I know. Lewis is I'm doing just a doing, Snapchat. A, doing a quick snappy. Um, all right. Thank you very much. That's the end. I never know how to end the podcast. It's like every week I just go, <laughs> bye. <laughs> so there you have it. Peter came. And I know what a few of you are probably thinking. Oh, look, did we just pretend that Peter came? You know, because it, it, I guess in hindsight, thinking about it now, it probably would be easy to fake in an audio medium that Peter came. But no, I would never do that. Um, you know, I have a lot more integrity as a comedian, uh, as an artist, and, you know, as the host of this podcast and also as the uh, head of this uh, pigeon hunt, you know, to, to fake that Peter came. But um, look, ask every single person who came. Uh, he came, Peter came, and it was... I can't... I still... I, look... I don't, it was so hard to hide this from you, you know, throughout this whole podcast. You guys would have been listening and just, you know, me knowing what happened. Um, looking back on it now, it was incredible. So at the time, what happened was we actually got the interview with him. We did an interview with Peter. It went for about two to three minutes, and it was breathtaking. It was everything I ever wanted for this podcast and more. But here's the thing. Originally, I thought the uh, SD card had corrupted, but uh, I've since realized that I have the interview with Peter Pigeon recorded. Now, we talked about a lot of things. Okay, me and Peter, we talked, and, and everyone there can, can confirm this. We talked about, you know, life. We talk, He gave us, you know, so much wisdom, so much insight. And to be honest, I don't think the world's ready for it. That's the thing. I, I could release the interview, and I know we've been trying to get it for quite some time, but now that I've got it, and I've got it, you know, on my computer and, and in my possession... <sighs> I don't think I can release it. I think it will start World War Three. I think with the knowledge that Peter dropped and uh, the things that we talked about in that two to three minutes, um, it's not safe. You know, the world's not ready yet. And that's... It, look, to be honest, in hindsight, that should have been expected. So here's what I'm going to do. I will release the Peter Pigeon interview when the time is right. Whether that be next week, next year, next decade next century, next m- millennium. We, we, when the time is right, I mean, I'll, I don't know yet when the time will be right, but I will, mark my words, I will release the Peter Pigeon interview when the time is right. Uh, now, before I finish up, I want to thank a few people. Firstly, thank you very much to Peter Pigeon for coming down from the heavens and descending uh, his wisdom and you know, himself upon us in such a time of need at the end of the podcast. I mean, we thought that was going to be an incredibly underwhelming ending, and it would have been if he hadn't have come just at the nick of time. So thanks very much to Peter. It was majestic. It was incredible to finally meet you. Uh, it was everything I wanted and more, and all the people there were genuinely starstruck and um, overwhelmed to see you. So thanks very much. And, yeah, thank you, everyone who came. I hope it was worth it. I mean, of course it was worth it for everyone who came. But um, yeah, you guys were absolute legends. There was about 50 people came out, which is way more people than I thought would come. Uh, thank you very much to all the members of the Elite Birdwatching Task Force. I think we can all agree that they went above and beyond and did not let us down. Because uh, yeah, they got the job done in the end. Peter came. And uh, yeah, so to all the people listening, thank you very much A for getting this far. Sorry about the audio quality. It was the first time I had ever recorded or ever done a live thing before. So uh, ask everyone who was there. We had some technical difficulties. Um, us trying to get the mics to work for about 10 minutes beforehand. But uh, we eventually got it all going. So yeah, bits in the podcast may have been a bit hard to understand and such. But uh, you know what? It's only going to get bigger and better from here doing these you know, live different things. Um, so yeah, th- thank you everyone for listening. Um, look, I'm sorry you didn't get to hear the interview. It's just when you're dealing dealing with something this precious and this, um, you know, when you have that much responsibility um, kind of thrust upon you, it's it's quite overwhelming and I just don't think the time's right. And I think, you know, if you're a true fan and respect Peter's wishes, you should all understand that. But um, yeah, that's it. And uh, thanks very much for Lewis as well for co-hosting the podcast with me. Uh, Bird's Eye did an excellent job. Uh, looking uh, at the world from the bird's perspective gave us an insight into what it's like to be a bird as the watchtower. So thank you very much, Lewis. And uh, a big thank you to Emily, who was there on the day helping out. She did a bunch of stuff behind the scenes. Uh, Everyone who was there would have spoken to her. Uh, She was awesome. Couldn't have happened without her either. And uh, also thank you to everyone for bringing $5 for our Tisha's mission, which was the brain cancer fund that we were supporting. Uh, We ended up raising, it was definitely over $200 on the day. 
And um, I think now we're also selling t-shirts as well. I still haven't added up that money. And I, I'm not talking about my You Don't Own Me t-shirts. I'm talking about uh, the limited edition fat shaming uh, t-shirts. If you go on my website, you may have seen it in the Facebook group during the week. We've actually made a limited edition fat bird shaming t-shirt. Uh, the design was done by Joe Waldron during the week, who was a fat bird enthusiast, just like you and I. Um, yeah, so it's a really cool design. It's just, just dude with a megaphone yelling shame at a fat bird. It's kind of a cartoony drawing. That's on the back, and then on the front is just a little logo on the pocket that says um, EBWTF, which obviously stands for Elite Bird Watching Task Force. Uh, those t-shirts, I'm going to try and make, oh, they are the exactly the same price as my tour t-shirts, but all proceeds go to Tisha's Brain Cancer Fund. Uh, it'd be really cool if you went and got one on my website, because we do need about... 20 to 30 for me to order them at an affordable price where they uh, cost below $20. Because if you Google it, um, print on demand t shirts are usually about 20 something bucks, or over 20 bucks, about $25 with shipping. And uh, But if you order in bulk, it's a bit cheaper. So it'd be awesome uh, for you guys to go get on that. Because the more people who order, the more money that's obviously raised, uh, the more money from each t shirt goes to uh, the actual fund. So that'd be cool if you guys went and did that. I'm going to order one because I want. Uh, a fat bird shaming t-shirt. It's sick. But uh, yeah, go on my website. It's just under the merch thing and pick up one of those t-shirts because um, we'll only be making a few and it'd be awesome if you went and got one. Pretty good meme t-shirt. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. It was a bit of a long podcast this week, but uh, I'll see you all next week and thanks very much to everyone who came out. This was the funnest thing I think we've all ever done with the podcast and uh, yeah, it was awesome seeing you guys in person. Uh, you guys went above and beyond for this one, and I can't thank you enough. Cheers. Adios. Bye.